we're live. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to our family reunion. Today, we have the pleasure of having with us Dr. Claudia Consuegra and Dr. Pa Pamela Consuegra. They head the family ministries for the North American division. As we have done in the past, we like to remind you as you join in to please mute your microphones. Um, we would also like to remind you that as we head into this great topic of the value of grandparenting, that you jot down your questions and um, send them to us via chat on Zoom and also with your comments for those of you who are on face who are joining us via Facebook Live. Thank you very much again for uh, joining us and um, we would like to begin this afternoon with prayer. At the end, we will pray for any requests that you may have. So please also include your um, request on either the chat or Facebook Live. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we praise your name. And once again, we come before you to thank you for um, everything that you have done for us, to thank you for the privilege of um, being here today for the privilege of being called your children and for the blessing of having grandparents. We ask that you be with us as we talk a little bit about grandparenting and the importance that it is to be a grandparent. Please guide us and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, Dr. Consuegra, please take it from here. Thank you so much, and uh, to all of you, welcome to our, our family room. Uh, this is a good family reunion, and we're delighted to be uh, with you. I was just saying before we started that we, had a, we just had a bad storm come by, and I was worried that maybe uh, uh, we were going to be flooded. But the one thing that happened, the wind did blow my toupee away. So if you find it in Massachusetts or Connecticut, please ship it back to me because it gets cold in the winter, you know. We are really happy to be with you and Juan and Sanaida. Thank you so much for inviting us and thank you and congratulations for doing this. This is very valuable. This is very powerful to be able to spend the time with your families every so often. And we are delighted that we get to talk about a special topic which has to do with grandparenting. In fact, just so that we could uh, have a, or be on the same page, I'm gonna share my screen with you so that that way we can follow along with our presentation. So the title of our presentation is, oh, I'm going backwards. Let me go back. There we go. Well, I had intended to do it right, so let me do it again. There we go. Grandparenting, giving our grandchildren a grand view of God. It's interesting that we as uh, grandparents or we as parents don't know the, our role, but sometimes we don't know what role grandparents uh, play. Uh, to set the stage, we want to begin with the Bible text. We're not, we're not going to read the whole thing, but uh, how come you're not helping? I apologize. I'm not, don't know if I'm not pressing the right button here. There we go. Let's do it again. Hmm. All right. Well, do it. Here we go. I think we're on now. We just had the presentation in Spanish and it worked fine. Okay, there we go. Psalm 78. We're not going to read the entire passage, but uh, we're going to emphasize those two verses. Verse 4 says, we will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Now, you notice that we highlighted the words, the generation to come. And in verse 6, it says again, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children. So there's a special role for the generations, especially the grandparents, and how they affect the generations to come. Now, we want to take a moment to look at some of the statistics regarding grandparents. If you're a grandparenting a grandparent today, you will have significantly longer life expectancy. And in fact, 
Research says that you will live approximately 30% of your life as a grandparent and up to 20% of your life as a great grandparent. Now that's significant, isn't it? That's a, that's a significant portion of our lives spent in grandparenting. We are living longer, so therefore there's a good chance that we will have a lot of years as grandparents and even great grandparents. Here's a few more stats that uh, we, th we think are important. The percentage of U.S. households led by grandparents is 37%. Now that means sometimes that children with their children are moving back with their grandparents. And so therefore they're living under the same roof. But imagine that 37% are in that situation. And 63% of grandparents say they can do a better job as a grandparent than they did as a parent. Well, maybe that's true because they're experienced now, right? That's right. Now, notice the difference here. The percent of grandparents that are the primary caregivers of their grandchildren is 13%. In this case, it is grandparents who are actually parenting their grandchildren. For whatever reason, the, the, your grandchildren's parents or your children are gone out of the picture. They are dead, in jail don't have any relationship with you or with their children. So you are raising your own grandchildren. That's 13%. So in that case, that those grandparents are actually parents right. as well, have taken on the parenting role. 43% right. of grandparents became a grandparent when they were in their 50s. And 37% when they were in their 40s. That's pretty young. And the average age of becoming a grandparent today is 48 years old. 48 years old. Now we ask this question often of grandparents. How do you see your role? How do you describe your role as grandparents? And of course we get all kinds of answers, but here are some of the most common answers that we get from grandparents. My job, many say, is to spoil my grandchildren. And others say, I want to give my grandchildren all the things that I couldn't provide for my own child. We've heard some say, I have time now to have fun with them. Or I can play video or computer games with them. And of course, and this is the good part, I can babysit them. Or how about this one? Are you guilty of this? I get to give them all the sweets they want, and then I can send them back home to their parents. And we've heard many uh, grandparents saying, I want to be the first to take them to Disneyland or Disney World. So that's what we have heard from grandparents. The question is, what does the Bible say of the role of grandparents? This is how they, the grandparents, see it. But how does scripture describe the role of grandparents? You know, if we were to ask you right now for a Bible verse that describes the role of a husband, you may say to us, husbands, love your wives. That's a directive in the Bible, isn't it? In the same chapter, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, we read, wives, respect your husbands. That also is found there. Or what about children? We, we know of a verse that says what the role of children are. Children, obey your parents. But can you think of a text that tells you what your role as grandparents is? Now, we know of grandparents in the Bible. Adam was the first grand, grandfather. Eve, the first grandmother. Excuse me. We know of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, all of them were grandparents. We know of many grandparents in the Bible, but can you think of a text that specifically talks about grandparenting? Well, we want to suggest a couple of them, going all the way back to the Old Testament. The first one is found in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 2 and 9. This is what portions of the text, you can read them all uh, later on your own. But verse 2 says to keep the commandments of the Lord your God. And then verse 9 says, teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Don't forget that word. That's why we underlined it and put it in different color. Because sometimes we read it so fast that we forget what it says and its significance. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. That's your role as, your, as a grandparent not only to teach things to your children, but also to your grandchildren, to the next generation. And here's another one found in Deuteronomy. 
that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son, and your grandson. There again, the Bible clearly connects the generation. It connects our responsibility as a parent to our children to that as a grandparent to our grandchildren. Yeah. Uh, there's an author, a pair of authors, the Schur's uh, couple, I should say, and they said something that we think is significant because it's not just simply about teaching as if you are a professor of sorts, but really about showing your grandchildren about God, what it means to be a disciple of God or of Jesus. Grandparents teach young people social morality and give them a sense of right and wrong, a set of absolutes upon which they can build their lives. In this day of relative truth, grandchildren need models of truth and biblical morality, models that don't change with the times. And then notice this words, they need to see integrity consistently displayed. Creative, involved grandparents provide grandchildren a model of morality to emulate. So it's more than just teaching your grandchildren, it's showing them the integrity, the consistency, the faith that grandparents should have so that they can emulate it. And how do you do that, grandparents? Here are some ways that you pass on this legacy of faith to your grandchildren. The first one is through prayer. Do your grandchildren see you in prayer and do they hear you praying for them? Of course, in personal Bible study, we hope that they see you studying the Bible. If they see you do it, then they may be interested in doing it themselves. Or what about service projects? And it's not just about giving them money to go on a mission trip. It's about you doing things, service projects together with your grandchildren. And also maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Do you exercise? Do you eat properly? Do you get enough water? Do you go out in the sunshine and get fresh air? All those things are examples that, that, that your children will follow. And how do you use technology? That's a very important one, that we are good models for our grandchildren regarding texting, the shows we watch, uh, if we're driving or on our cell phones. All of those are ways that we can model responsible behavior to our grandchildren. Even through your own marriage, they see, they see and they get a lesson, good or bad. One of the interesting things that we are learning about it is something called gray divorce where older people, after they have raised their children, now they're getting divorced. We can tell you this, children and grandchildren will suffer the divorce of their parents or grandparents. So if you divorce, if your marriage is in trouble and they can tell, you're also teaching them a bad lesson that way. Here are some more <laughs> ways that you can give them a grand view of God. Include them. Include them in the things you do. Include them in your service projects. We already talked about that. Or even in your daily worship that you're having. Tell them about your personal experience with God. Tell them when you came to know God, when you gave your life to Jesus, how you followed him to the waters of that baptism. We talk about that in the terms of your testimony. Tell them those things because they need to know what your walk, what your journey with God has been like. And lead them lead them to Jesus. You lead them through your actions, through what you model, through what you say to them. Make sure you're reflecting Jesus to them. Show them. Show them where you can find teaching in the Bible. Show them where else they can find good guidance, who they can talk to. All those things are very important to do. But ultimately, and this is where we want to conclude, ultimately, as grandparents, we need to remember that our role is to follow the gospel commission. Go into the world and make disciples, is what Jesus said. Make disciples. But when we think of that, we think that that means go someplace in the world and make disciples. When our responsibility as disciple makers is to begin in the home. It should begin with our children and continue with their children or our grandchildren. 
So don't be so busy telling the gospel to the whole world that in the process you skip over one of the most important treasures God has given you, that is your grandchildren. The gospel commission admonishes us to go and make disciples. Now, this is very brief and very quick, but we want to encourage you to read our book. In fact, I'm going to go back because that's where the title of the book is too. That's the cover of the book. It's called Grandparenting, Giving Our Grandchildren a Grand View of God. And you can find it on Amazon or adventsource.org. adventsource.org or Amazon. You can buy, them, uh, buy the book in print or in digital format. And we encourage you, among other things, those of you who are already grandparents, maybe some of you are older and you're thinking, well, I don't drive at night, so I don't want to go to prayer meeting. But maybe you can have a midweek service in the afternoon and maybe organize a grandparents club of sorts where you can support and encourage one another as grandparents in the work and the ministry that you have for your grandchildren. In fact, we want to take just a moment to encourage all of you in our churches. Maybe you don't have biological grandchildren, or maybe your own biological grandchildren live far away across the country. So we just want to encourage and empower you and just to start thinking about your ministry in the church. There's so many young people that sit in your pews every week that need a Christ-like matriarch or patriarch to take notice of them, to kind of take them under their wing, to pray for them, to offer them wisdom and counsel. So there's so many young people in our congregations that would benefit from the older people instead of us sometimes thinking, I've done my ministry. It's time for the younger people to take over. We want to tell you, you have a very important God-given ministry. As an, as an older person, as a matriarch and patriarch of the church. So thank you, Juan and Sanaida, again for giving us this time. And uh, we'll turn it over back to you and uh, be your, your guest again. Thank you very much Thanks for again. that wonderful presentation. There, um, as um, Dr. Pamela Consuegra was saying right now, um, and it, it hit a like a sensitive fiber in me, how important it is for people, um, older people within our church to take on, mm -hmm. uh, on other grandchildren. Growing up, I didn't have the experience that um, my husband had. He had very close grandparents that took him under his wing. Um, I didn't have that personally. I had grandparents, but they were not those, that kind of grandparents. So I like to say that I have adopted throughout my life on um, grandparents within the church and sometimes outside of the church mm -hmm. who I have seen as role models, who I have seen as um, people that have been great grandparents. And that has had a, an enormous it has been an enormous blessing in my life. Um, I was able to see growing up that um, a very healthy dynamic of grandparents and their grandchildren from this family that lived across the street from where we lived. So I know what that looks like. And um, so I cannot stress enough the importance, at least I can see from a product of it, how important that is for us. Yes, and I um, I want to ask the same question that was asked earlier in Spanish. This was um, somebody wanted to know what to do when you, as a parent, are trying to discipline your your uh, children, and your father, meaning the grandparent of the kids, tries to get involved. Um, what can you do without being disrespectful, but you know, making sure that you let them know these are my kids. Or offensive. Well, it's very important for grandparents to understand their boundaries, to understand that your role as a grandparent does not mean that you're in charge of the discipline of the children. That's the parent's responsibility. So certainly if that happened, I would encourage the, the parents of the child 
don't have that conversation in front of the child, but go somewhere private and maybe just have a very loving, but a very firm conversation with your own parents and explain to them, you want them to be involved in the life of, of their grandchild, but they need to understand the boundaries. They need to understand that what you say as a disciplinarian goes. And I wanna underscore something that uh, Pam said. You talk to your parents, not with your in-laws. That's right. So if you are the, the mother, you talk to your parents and uh, your husband talks to his parents or vice versa. Because if you don't, if you try to talk to your in-laws, then it gets even more complicated. Mm -hmm. but, but in that conversation with your parents, you need to remind them of the boundaries that need to be observed and respected, but also the, the, uh, the, the possible consequences, so to speak. You don't want to warn them or threaten them, but to say, you know, if this continues, we may have to limit the time that you spend with our kids or with your grandchildren. We don't want that to happen. So therefore, please help us and support us in what we're trying to do. Otherwise, again, there may be distance be with, uh, with your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I Thank think you. there was someone in Zoom that appeared to have a question. Um, I, I only see Margarita's iPhone. Um, so if, if you have a question, please feel free to chime in. <clears throat> I don't know, as someone who's, um, I can see Braintree250 um, was indicating that she was having problems hearing you. I don't know if they still have um, issues with it's the audio. I'm a very soft-spoken <laughs> person. That's that's a reason why. Well, and for, for those folks who are only connecting via Zoom, hopefully they also know this is available also on Facebook, on, mm -hmm. your, on your Facebook page. So they can go back and watch it at their convenience. And the sound is fine there because I was listening to the Spanish one. Yes. And I, I want to mention that uh, regarding your book, we found it already and we're going to post pictures of the cover of the book um, on our page on Facebook so that if anybody's interested, you could do your search and, and get it via Amazon or Advent Source, right? Advent Source. AdventSource.org. Or Amazon and it's available in Spanish and in English. Okay. You highlighted during your presentation um, how the function or the of the grandparent is um, to create or to continue. It's, it has a generational effect. Um, we like to think, and, and I think this is the way we viewed it, um, even though we, we pray constantly that God helps us execute, um, that we need our first responsibility as parents is to raise children that will be citizens of heaven. And we'd Amen. like to think that the grandparents would jump on board and help us do that. And I think that's one of the things that I saw um, you highlighting. Um, what about when that's not happening? Um, what do, how do we convey that, um, that message to to the parents when we see things that may to the parents or grandparents to the to the grandparents i'm sorry I'll well you know and this is where this is where obviously as a parent if i'm raising my child in a christian home the more people that i have in my child's life that reinforce those same values the better and the more it becomes instilled in the life of that child but it in reality, there are some grandparents who do not, will not have the same Christian values and beliefs that you have. That's why it's so important to empower this generation of folks that sit in the pews of our churches, because our young people need to see older role models who believe in Jesus and who have the same faith values that you're instilling in them in the home. Ideally, that individual would be the child's biological grandparents. But if that's not the case, then we look to, to those, those dear saints in the church 
to fill that role. And, and that's why as a church, we have to do a better job about maybe starting grandparenting clubs in our churches to where grandparents can get together and talk about this and can actually make sure if, if they could make it a goal on Sabbath morning, I am not going to leave church today until I speak to a young child. So I influence a young child and I say something that will draw them closer to Jesus. The other side of the coin is what if it's your children who are not practicing the faith and therefore their grandchildren or my grandchildren are not. And, and that's one of those areas where we again ask you to be very careful because you have to respect your children as the primary disciple makers of their children. So you may not be able to directly intervene but you can do it indirectly what we tell you though is if you uh, if you get into arguments with your children about how they should be raising their children it's not to your advantage and if you are after your grandchildren telling them what to do all the time it will also backfire on you because your grandchildren will eventually say i don't want to hear from grandma or grandpa because all they want to do is preach to us you can love them you can pray for them. You can pray with them. You can teach them very subtle messages. Just don't become a sermonizer, a preacher of sorts that aggravates your children and your grandchildren. Yes. Best sermon really is your example. Amen. 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 That definitely. Definitely. Well, we've been blessed by what you have shared with us. Um, I believe Juan and I have been blessed with the parents that we have. Um, my parents take care of my children. We've had the tough conversations sometimes. This is this is what we do. We decided very well, early. She's on. Well, I, yes, <laughs> I, <laughs> my parents are in Puerto Rico. So. <laughs> yes, but but I stay away from having a conversation with his parents. <laughs> Um, I tell him so that he conveys the message. Um, so we've been... Let him, let him be the sacrificial lamb. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so yes, it's, it's extremely important to, to work as a team. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and if we can have a common purpose, I think we're heading in the right direction. Yes. Um, Again, thank you very much for sharing. I don't see any additional questions. I, I remember from the previous um, session in Spanish, there was one question about punishing um, uh, grandchildren's behavior. So I, for the benefit of those who could be listening to this in English, um, would you repeat in English your stance or would you how you feel about how grandparents should be involved. So the question was, uh, when should grandparents punish their grandchildren? And I said that there's a difference between punishing and disciplining your children. And what we hope that you do is that you discipline your children. But remember, the word discipline comes from the same root word as disciple. So disciplining your children is leading them to become disciples of Jesus. But also keep in mind, and we, we have said this, uh, and, and we'll say it in the book very often, that the primary disciple makers of your grandchildren, it's their parents. In other words, your children. Your role as a grandparent is to support your children in mm -hmm. their role as disciple makers. If your children don't behave properly or, or break the rules, so to speak, you need to speak with your children and let them be the ones to decide how they're going to correct or discipline their children. Unless you are raising your grandchildren, you know, your grandchildren are, or your children are completely out of the picture and you are the primary, the parent of your grandchildren. Well, then you have to make that clear to your grandchildren as to what the boundaries are, what the consequences are. But again, don't think in terms of punish, we're going to punish our grandchildren, but rather see how we can discipline them, how we can lead them to become disciples of Jesus. Never ignoring the role of the parents, their parents, but rather to su supporting them as parents as they discipline their children. Thank you. 
there are times when the styles conflict. Yes. <laughs> and, and, I, and I've heard it even though we have a pretty good relationship um, and good, um, I would say, method within um, my parents and especially my mom and us, there are many times when our method is not considered to be the right method. Mm -hmm. And if, the, if there's a conflict, the parents win. The parents have been called to raise that child. And, and there again, you know, we don't have time because it's a completely different full <laughs> seminar. It's a whole chapter in the book on helping grandparents understand what their role is, what it is not, and where that boundary line is drawn. And the only time where we condone the grandparents getting involved is if they know they're fully aware that there is abuse in the home. Yes. If their grandchildren are being abused by your own kids, then you need to take action. And the action is not going there to confront your parents. It may be calling the authorities. And it may be that the authorities take your children and you have to then raise your grandchildren. But hopefully that's not the case in, in your situation, you're just talking about common, normal conflict in the home. Respect your children and, and support them as they raise their children. Very well. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I would ask you to lead us in prayer so that we could end the meeting. I don't know if there are any requests for prayer. We usually ask. We ask for any prayers, prayer requests. I don't, I don't see, any. see any. So if you could lead us in prayer, uh, we will appreciate it. Okay. Dear Father, we thank you for this opportunity this afternoon to talk about the role of grandparents. We pray that for all the grandparents listening, that you will help us to reflect Jesus to our grandchildren and help us to understand that the most important thing legacy that we can leave them is not in, a mat in material possessions or wealth or money, but the most important thing we leave behind is having them walk in the footsteps of Jesus Amen. and help all of our actions and words to reflect you to them. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you again for joining us, everybody, and we hope to see you back in two weeks. God bless. Bye-bye. We'll stay on. Yes. Do you want to end the meeting for the rest? Oh, I just saw a prayer request just came through um, for Kwan and Brandon. We will be praying for um, Kwan and Brandon. We'll get back on um, Dr. Consuegra. <laughs>